Watch if it. you don't raise my budget, I'm gonna be a sugar daddy. I'm kidding. I'm sorry. I'm kidding. <laughs> what did you say? Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good vibes. Good energy. Good people. It's your boy Mickey Fenty, aka Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe right now. Also, if you want to support my brand, it's Inspired by Dreams. Dot shop. It's a preppy streetwear brand. Just getting my community to dress outside of the box. Okay, today's episode is getting crazy out here. So a lot of, I guess I should say, sugar babies trying to find a sugar daddy because they don't want to work. Man, these times are getting very serious. You guys gotta let me know what you think about. You know, are you, you know, would you rather live a lifestyle of somebody just paying for everything for you, being a sugar daddy to you? and you just become the sugar baby or would you just rather be independent and go for it yourself? Let's jump through this and see how it's going and people are making money behind this thing. So you guys let me know. Let's get it. Mickey made it. Mickey made what you made, Mickey. Forget about the way it used to be. This is not a damn democracy. We are in a state of emergency, and my word is law. I quit to become a sugar baby. Tell you all of his requirements and things I can and cannot do. Definitely prefers my hair ponytail pulled back away from my face. When it comes to my appearance as a whole, he likes it very natural. He's a wholesome man. When it comes to like my actual body, he likes fit and healthy. Now, this isn't much of a problem for me. It can become a problem and he will let you go. This, he's very particular about what I wear. He does give me money to go out and buy whatever it is that he wants me to put on. Which is why I don't complain too much. When speaking of paying for it, I'm gonna go over some of the things that he does pay for that I don't. Now, he pays me about twice a month. He pays for food or my time that I spend with him. My favorite payment is when he pay my rent. My favorite. I'm not the only one. And he does have us in multiple places. I originally am from Atlanta, but he asked me to move to South Carolina. And I did. And y'all know he paid my moving expenses too. And that I did move away from my family for him. He does give me particular times during the month. Um, to go and you know spend time with my family and do things that I want to do if I have to travel to another place for him He pays for that as well. My flight my rental car and even gives me a little bit of extra money so that I can eat while I'm out there Doing whatever it is he needed me to do There's not many things that I don't like about him. He can make some unnecessary rules But for me because of that pay I don't complain. Just getting dressed and I'm gonna show y'all his favorite outfit Honestly, I don't know why he chose this outfit because it's not the most flattering thing. Whatever he want, I'm going to give it to him. Now, let me hurry up because he don't like when I'm late. See, you keep standing up in here talking about uh, your rent need to be paid and your car need to, get, need to get paid. Now, the only thing standing between that happening is that motherfucker in there. So, if you know like I know and you want to help your motherfucking self, you go in there and get in that goddamn bed. And I promise you, you're going to leave here with cash motherfucking money. Money. You... You might get, be getting ready to go through something, but when, when you leave here, money gonna be one thing that ain't gonna be no problem. You might have a so ad and a so my, but you don't have no, you don't have no money problem. That gonna be gone. That gonna be all be over. You understand me? If I wasn't supposed to grow up to want a sugar daddy, then why did we base an entire holiday around an older man bringing me gifts for being a good girl? So I can finally say a man paid my rent. A man paid my rent this month well for next month and i'm so happy to join y'all okay because i have not experienced this the only thing that ha that i've experienced is a nigga staying in my house and then giving me some money because i'm like fuck you think you're gonna be laid up in my house for but i haven't had no man like give me money who was not in my space who i'm not having with who honestly i'm out the country so can't even see me a man made my rent this month. i'm gonna tell you how i met him so one day I was coming from a doing makeup or whatever. This one I was still in LA. Uh, this literally probably a week before I moved out of LA, I met him. It was it's crazy a coincidence. So I was walking literally in my home, and it was this Range Rover like parked outside, and that's normal because I live like in a 
my rent was four thousand dollars y'all watched the video on youtube anyway um i was he was outside my building and he was like he was kind of looking at me and i was looking back at him because he you know <laughs> so he was like you a makeup artist i was like yeah he was like oh yeah i'm a producer or whatever he was like um I asked you that because I see the case you got in the light in there or whatever. I, he was like, yeah. He was like, what you about to do? I'm like, go home. Like, almost kind of like weird. Like, I don't even want to walk in the house because, but I'm answering him. He was like, um, when can I see you or whatever? I'm like, when you want to see me? He was like, what you doing on Monday? And I was like, well, I move out the country on Monday <laughs> because I was literally moving. So he ended up taking me out Saturday, Sunday. Because I ended up, it was actually Tuesday that I was leaving. I thought it was Monday. He ended up taking me out on Sunday. Um, and we went out to eat. Like, it was just us on a rooftop. It was a vibe. He was mad funny. He's African, but actually, sp come on out. You know you got some some Nigerians that's not going to spend a coin. And you got some that will spend a coin. But, like, he's very chivalrous. He's older. Let's get to the point. The man's older. He is, I want to say... 40 late 40s or something he got kids my age not my age maybe they like in their earlier 20s i'm about i'm 28 um but he's a dad he has two kids but yeah yesterday i was like well, what you getting me for christmas and he was like um i really should have been there out there with you or whatever he was but he visited his kids uh one in canada and then he went to go see the other one in new york so that's what he's doing for the holidays right now i'm like it's okay you can pay my rent and he was like, okay, I will. And he didn't even ask me how much it was. It's like, hold up. I said, you saying, yeah, you ain't even you ain't even asked me how much it was or whatever. He was like, I got it. Um, yeah, but he said that today. <laughs> and now I've joined y'all. And I and I like you. Yeah, I love you. Because I ain't even had a right this one. So that's period. How much money is it? 10000 11000 Is it mine? Yeah, I ain't go to work today because my man got me. Sitting in a fucking car. Personal assistant. Oh, I am? Yeah. Okay. For today. Well, I'll just count the money. I had a sugar daddy and he was bomb. Like, we watched Rick and Morty. We had five minutes of doggy. We had sugar fish and he would just complain about his job. And the only issue in his life was that he was short and he wouldn't shut the fuck up about it. <laughs> and I kept being like, bro, if you just stop talking about being short, you would get put. Like, oh, I swear. Yeah. And he was just like, no, it's because all these girls are like, they want to be a six feeter. So you guys are looking for a sugar daddy. I'm going to tell you how to find one. All of my 20s I spent in Miami Beach trying to get someone to buy me dinner. And I was going about it all wrong. And so were you girls. You're like going out there half naked. Tonight I went to the bar. This was my outfit, guys. I am completely covered. And I sat down at the bar. God, I wish this would have happened to me in my 20s. And what sits next to me? One gentleman literally got up from the table he was eating to sit next to me at the bar because I didn't look like the other fucking girls. So you guys are all looking for a sugar daddy and looking for someone to take care of you and looking for somebody to buy you dinner. But you look like every other fucking girl that's what? looking for somebody to buy them dinner and looking for a sugar daddy. Da, da, da. You need to separate yourself from the crowd. I have a huge haul from my sugar daddy. You heard it right. You are it right. So I'm gonna show you um, what he bought me today. So, so first from offline, I'm getting a grout fit. I got this gray hoodie. It's literally the soft. You know, it's it's almost like fish bait, but this thing ever. And then I got the matching sweatpants to go with them. Yeah, the As I'm wearing gray sweatpants now, but it's fine. And then I also got this tank top it's gray with white stripes i feel like this would be cute to wear underneath and then when i get hot i can take this off and i also got hungry so he bought me these little chocolate pretzels so then i went to eagle and oh my goodness i'm obsessed with what i got I got this budweiser crew neck literally so cute and wait 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 and then i got the matching budweiser little boxers I'm going to be wearing this to bed tonight. I saved the best for last. Then I went to Aerie. And I got the viral, the pants that went viral last year on TikTok. They're like these tan, um, like the most amazing wide leg pants ever. So I got them in this tan color. Okay, the pants was nice, but come on. And I got them in this green color. 
as well. And yeah. So that's everything he got me and I'm probably gonna be getting more soon because I'm spoiled. Let me know if you want a try on haul and love you. It's mail time, literally my favorite. I love mail time. I love opening my mail and you know why? Because goddess mail isn't like anyone else's mail. I get special mail. So this is what I'm curious to see. Addressed to Jasmine Mendez. I obviously covered my address because you guys are freaks. <laughs> my hair does look extra crazy and that's because I showered and I didn't stop. Like I always say you guys, it's happening. So my hair is this long and it's all mine. And this is what it looks like when I shower and I don't curl. You see some get curly and some don't. That's why I prefer it curled. I'm always with the curlies, but I didn't have time today. And don't come at me, I did break a nail. So fuck you, I broke a nail. Oh well, I have to get it fixed. But my mail, here we go. I'll get to this after. Goddess Jasmine, happy Valentine's Day. I hope you had an awesome day. I miss you so much, more and more every day. I can't wait to see you. You are so beautiful and your beauty isn't only skin deep. You have a beautiful personality and you are wonderful to be around. Spending time with you is a highlight of my day, week, month, year, and life. Oh, yes. You are my goddess. You are my queen. You are irresistible. I will do anything for you. Mm, yes. I crave you. I crave your control. I love worshiping you. I love serving you. I love sacrificing for you. I love you. Yours always. Curious to see. There's a letter. I don't know if you guys can read backwards, but I read word for word, bitches. That's my love mail. <laughs> mail. Yes. I have the best. The best mail. Now let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, two, twenty, three, two, four, two, five. So five hundred dollars. You know, just a small little love letter <laughs> from my good boy. Curious to see. Now. If you're a girl and you're not getting mail like this, beautiful, heart failed mail, I would reconsider a lot of things. <laughs> the boys you let around you, who you're letting consume your time, who you're spending your time with, who, who are you wasting your time on that isn't. You gotta be so disrespectful and show it. You know, I mean. Uh thinking of you and spoiling you go see look right here five hundred dollars there's my hair appointment there's my nail appointment maintenance maintenance for goddess i love my mail see my mail is always fun to open mail is my favorite <laughs> i love sexy little love notes with cash attached to them. Mm hmm Now these are my favorites. Mail. Always fun opening my mail. Always. <laughs> Mwah. Thank you, Curious Sissy. You're such a good boy. One day I just woke up and something just dawned on me. Do I want to be a nigga's mother? Or it's child, it's toddler. I'ma take the toddler for 200, I ain't gotta pay for shit. Nigga wipe my ass, he do all that shit. Yes, give me that old ass man. Here are three things that your sugar daddy says that tells you he is rich, but you're not gonna get much from him. Ever heard the saying, when a man tells you who he is, believe him? In every relationship, women are stronger in the beginning because we lack feelings for the man just yet. So we use that time to lay out boundaries by asking them all the hard questions on the first date, taking notes of everything he says and does and being very critical 
seeking out red flags and green flags and yellow flags. So what makes you think a financial relationship is any different? In fact, one must be doubly critical when it comes to money. We all know money brings the best and the worst in human beings. So if ever a time to pull out red flags, green flags and yellow flags, it is on the first meet with your provider. Here are three things to look out for in your potential provider, which are an immediate red flag. Number one, when women ask me for money, I get turned off immediately. This line can be said in a hundred different ways and still mean the same thing. Run for your motherfucking life. He knows what he's doing. He is creating a foundation for you to be afraid to ask him for money because he has outlined the consequences. He gets turned off, he blocks them. You are caught in a position where you feel exposed and at the same time wondering what you should do because that is what you're here for. I'll tell you what to do. Don't be defensive, be offensive. When we are caught off guard, it is natural that we try to defend ourselves by making it seem like we're not one of those girls, which you are. And he is counting on that response because it would have meant that you have signed your verbal agreement. And the relationship will now continue in an unspoken acknowledgement of the kind of relationship you're gonna be having, which is a normal vanilla relationship with no financial benefit. You won't get money from him now or even later if you try to bring the conversation up because he can argue that you knew where he stood from the very beginning, which would be true. This is the deepest red flag. If there's anything redeemable from this kind of man, it definitely will not come from you defending yourself. He says, yeah, I once met girls and they asked me for money. I immediately block them. You say, well, that is a pity because I have my own money, but I like men to take care of me. There is no way a man I'm seeing does not want to treat me like a princess. Buying me expensive gifts, making sure that when I cough, he gets me water made of crystals. I've got to go. Order me a ride. You wouldn't have gotten money from him anyway. At least let him know who he's dealing with and go. Number two, do you have other sugar daddies who also help you with money? This line usually comes after you've put your expectation on the table and it might be too much for him. He realizes that is a tall order and that is basically him asking for help from other sugar daddies. This is obviously a major red flag. There is no way you're going to get money from this man. <laughs> we haven't even started and you try to delegate. Which you can respond to this line by saying, don't worry about the other sugar daddies. This is my expectation for you and just you, darling. Number three, I'm not going to see you that much anyway. This line is usually said in anticipation for what you're going to ask him or you've asked him for money and he realizes it's a lot and he's now starting to negotiate. He thinks the money you're asking for is too much since he's only going to see you, what, twice a week? That doesn't seem like a lot. I'll give you money when I see you. Sugaring is a relationship. You don't give me money when you see me. What about the texting and the calling? Those are all time I'm giving to you. So any potential provider who tries to negotiate in any form or similar to the line of, well, we don't see each other that much anyway, is a fucking red flag. They're always the ones you struggle to get money out of the most. Well, maybe not the most, alongside the other two that I just mentioned. Which you respond by saying, well, you need it not have come this far. Brothels are a few kilometers to the right. I think they offer pay per meet. What a terrible miscommunication. My other sophisticated providers are waiting for me. A lot of women set the bar by if he's rich or not. Honey, being rich is stage one of getting him to be a provider for you. Stage two is generosity and stage three is chivalrous personality which shows kindness and consideration. Just because he has money doesn't mean you'll get it and getting money is the only factor that matters. Today we're going to talk about three things that should be clarified before you set into your sugar daddy sugar baby relationship. This is not an endorsement of that lifestyle. I just know that some of you are going to do it no matter what people say and there are a few things that I wish I would have known before I got started. Number one, how many times a week are you going to be hanging out? Say a sugar daddy is going to give you $2,000 a month. Is that to hang out once a week or is he expecting to see you Thursday, Friday, and Sunday? 
Number two, the sleepover issue. Is he going to be expecting you to sleep over? Now, I like sleeping in my own bed, and I never wanted to have a sleepover, but I realize that this needs to be discussed in the negotiating phase. Otherwise, the sugar daddy can end up feeling like you're not fulfilling your part of the obligation and cause you a whole world of problems. Number three, travel. A lot of sugar daddies are looking for somebody to travel with them. However, a lot of them also think that a luxury vacation should count as the compensation. That wasn't something that worked for me, so you guys need to be clear about whether that works for you before you go forward. Otherwise, you can end up going on a great trip, but at the end of the week, your bank account looks the same. And that is not why girls usually end up going into this lifestyle. Here's the reason why your sugar daddy profile is not attracting any sugar daddies. Number one, your pictures are focused on the female gaze. We can do a survey showing men the pictures that you think are the cutest of you and I guarantee the pictures that he picks as your sexiest photos are far from what you imagined. Male and female gaze is real. If your pictures look like you're having fun at a hotel or just having fun with the girls, I guarantee it catches no fish in your net. But if your pictures look like they are bordering on the line of indecency and a playboy cover girl, you've hit the nail on the head. Number two, your bio tells them your whole life story. The only people your pathetic little life story is going to attract is men who prey on desperate women so that they can give them little to no money. Your bio needs to have attitude. Enough attitude to scare away the wannabes and make ways to the I don't have to try to bees. Bio needs to scare the broke man and excite the rich man. Bio like, your wallet and I are gonna have so much fun. But you can have fun too, from behind me, watching me spend your money. It's funny, it's sexy, it's scary, bitch, yes. Number three, you waste too much time on the time wasters. Nobody should be having such long ass conversations with anybody on a sugar daddy site about the weather and about how life is going when there has been no money transfer to seal the allowance deal. Your potential sugar daddies should be swiped on as fast as you would on Tinder. Is he talking too much? Swipe left. Is he too sexual in the first sentence? Swipe left. I don't care if he has a Bentley or a Lamborghini in his profile picture. Some of you are too married to these men's potentials. He looks like he can afford to give me the money I'm looking for. No, what I see is that he looks like he can afford those things for himself. What you are looking for in these wealthy men is the potential to spend on you, that he is generous. And being married to their potential instead of making them prove their generosity is why you're not attracting generous men. If you fix these three things, your profile will uplift. That's it, and go get your generous rich man sugar daddy job today and when I tell you my sugar daddy girl I'm not your sugar daddy if you're not my sugar daddy then what are you you're a husband because we are married okay answer me this then are you older than me by two years okay strike one do you not pay my bills our bills because we live together because we are married Mm -hmm. Strike two. And are you not paying for the vacation we about to go on? We. It came from our bank account. So we paid for this trip that we are about to co go on because we are mm -hmm. married. Tomato, tomato, strike three. And do I not give you sugar? Mm. <clears throat> uh... Mm -hmm. Well, I guess if you keep giving me sugar, you can keep calling me daddy. Like I said, y'all, I'm at my sugar daddy job today. Girl, I ain't your sugar daddy. I'm your husband. <laughs> okay, I'm at my husband job. Call restaurants ahead of time when you're going on a sugaring date and tell the staff. That is Sage. They are my mutual and I absolutely adore them. And the same way they are bewildered and confused, so am I. Because I don't know who's giving out this really bad advice, but it's going to end up with y'all getting arrested or killed. Do not go and call a restaurant and tell them that you are doing sex work because it will get you thrown in jail. I'm in Houston, Texas, y'all. I'm in the South, the deep South. That will get you arrested. <laughs> it will. There are three things you need if you want to be a successful sugar baby. One is a good fucking support system. 
okay individuals that love you and care for you and want to make sure that you make it home safely at the end of the night whether it's chosen family or family that you are actually related to by blood or unfortunate genetics number two you need to understand that covert your covertness is going to be the thing that makes you the most money so don't call a restaurant and number three is understanding that your safety is your number one priority all i can say is if it's about money there's so many other things you can do than to jump into like a fake relationship just to please somebody to diminish your character i mean it's a choice not an option you guys let me know in the comments how you feel about this whole sugar daddy sugar babies thing and I don't know. You guys let me know in the comments and I'll get right back. You know, on my morning show, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 9 a.m. Love you guys. Till next time, it's your boy Mickey Fenty, a.k.a. Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel.